Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to another Mortal Kombat 11 tutorial video. It's been a while since I've made one of these videos, but today I'm finally getting to probably one of the most requested topics that I've seen in the comments of my other videos, and that is anti-airing. People really wonder how do you anti-air in this game, how do you do it consistently, I'm getting fucked up by jump-ins all the time online, what do I do? And honestly, there is no simple easy answer. Sure, anti-airing is a lot stronger in this game than probably in any MK ever. However, these are jumpy games. Uh, NRS has always been famous for having games where jumping is fairly powerful, and this game is no exception. You just have more ways of dealing with it. Now one thing to mention here, we're going to be covering almost all anti-air options. One thing to keep in mind is that this game by default has around 4 to 5 frames of input delay online. So if you are unable to consistently anti-air, just keep in mind that it might have to do with just the connection. Or maybe you have to adjust your timing a little bit. Just keep that in mind uh, when you practice all of these anti-airing options. However, really the thing about anti-airing is just knowing when to do what, really. Uh, once you figure out how to do it offline, you can adapt it to online. So, I've picked Johnny Cage and Noob Saibot. Johnny Cage because he has a good variety of anti-air options, and Noob Saibot because he has good jump-ins. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and record him, do a little step back, and do his annoying jump kick. So this jump kick, of course, jump kicks are mad annoying. They do a lot of damage, they knock you down, the opponent can follow up with it if they want to. It's just, it's just annoying to deal with, you know, they can do a jump in. It seems like it's super plus on block, you cannot do anything. So yeah, jump kicks are annoying. How do you deal with them? Well, first thing to do, obviously, is down toing. Now, down toing as an anti-air option has been made a lot better in this game. Down toing is a very viable option. Down two has a huge hitbox. It does 14% damage. 14%, as same as a same as a throw. Now, if your opponent doesn't get scared by this, like if your opponent does like four jump ins, you down to all four of them, and they still keep jumping. Well, I'm sorry to say that you are fighting an idiot. Uh, if you get hit by down twos consistently from your opponent, you should stop jumping. Just stop jumping. There's a place to do jumping, but when they are that consistent with anti-airing, <laughs> that is not the place. So keep down twos in your mind. Now, of course, characters have differing down twos. Some characters have better down twos than others. Johnny Cage is one of the better ones, I think, in terms of like startup and hitbox. Devora has an excellent one. Some of the shittier ones are Cetrions, I would say. So yeah, keep that in mind that not all down twos are made the same. Now, just to cover this, uh, you saw that I was getting hit by the jump in several times while I was doing that. One of the biggest mistakes I see people do when they are anti-airing, and I think this is one of the main reasons why people are getting frustrated, uh, most often People get hit because they simply react too late. If you look at Noob's jump arc, you see how he kind of hits the top of his jump arc and then he starts falling into the jump kink. Anytime he's really past the halfway point, it's risky. It's risky to react. Like, you see, sometimes it works, sometimes doesn't. When he is at the top of his jump arc, uh, you are still good with anti-airing. When he is still going up into the air, there is a good time to anti-air. Once he's past that halfway point, it is it is too late. So one of the things I see people getting hit by most often, or the reason they're getting hit, is that they are simply reacting too late. Anti-airing, it has to be done quickly. You have to react very quickly and you will be able to do more consistent anti-airs for sure. That's for sure one of the biggest reasons why I see people failing their anti-airs. Now, we had down twos, let's cover some other options. Okay, why is he doing that? I don't know. Johnny Cage and some other characters, including Noob Saibot, Frost, characters like that, also have anti-airing special moves. Now, 
The same principle applies to anti-airing special moves as to anti-airing with a down two. You have to apply the same concept as in react to the opponent when he is at the top of his jump arc. Now this move, again, very good upwards hitbox. It deals less damage, however, anti-airing special moves often have some other advantages. Maybe that's one of the cases where Johnny Cage is not the best option, but for example, Noob Cybot, if I switch over to him, this move, this move is an excellent anti-air because it brings his hurt box, like he does this little crouch, it brings his hurt box very, very low to the ground. So that is an excellent consistent anti-air option with Noob Cybot. One thing I would recommend if you see your character might have an anti-airing special move, take it into training mode and test it out because, hey, it might even be better than his normal option. Even though it doesn't deal 14% damage like a down two, it might be worth using it for other reasons. All right, let's continue on. One of the most underused uh, anti-airing options is the standing one. A lot of characters have very good standing one anti-airs. Again, same concept applies. You have to react to the opponent at the top of his jump arc. When you are using a standing one anti-air, it is better if the opponent is a little bit farther away from you. As you can see, I'm screwing up the timing here. Yeah, as you can see, I take a little micro step backwards and I do the standing one. The advantage of a standing one anti-air is if I can get it, is that you can follow up from it. Uh, very good. You're getting a combo. You end in not punch. If you're Johnny Cage, you know, you get some advantage. Standing one anti-airs definitely have their place. I would say they're a little bit more situational, uh, more difficult. Like, standing one anti-airs are difficult. Don't get me wrong. Uh, this is an advanced technique. However, if you master it, you will find that it's actually a very good anti-airing option, mainly because, like I said, it allows for a full combo follow-up. Just keep in mind, the reason why anti-airing with standing ones is difficult is because their active frames, if you go into Johnny Cage's uh, standing one, it is active for two frames. That is a tiny window, so often hitting these online is going to be difficult, so keep that in mind. Another option that... Uh, a lot of pro players use, you'll see them do this, is the crouching jab anti-air, if I can get it. There we go. As you can see, if you time it correctly, again, you have to kind of take a little step back. If you time it correctly, it has Johnny Cage's <laughs> down one has an insane hitbox. Do you, see, do you see how far he is? I mean, noob, how far noob is in the air and it still hits? Yeah, uh, crouching jab anti-airs, and I think, yeah, you can even do it with the uh, the crouching kick if you do it, if you time it correctly. I did it, for, yeah, you can do it. So any low poke can be used as an anti-air. Again, they offer the same advantage as the standing one, you can follow up from it. The advantage that crouching jab anti-airs have is that you are crouching, so your hitbox, again, is a little bit closer to the ground, so you're a little bit more difficult to hit. Just, again, cannot stress this enough, both of these techniques are kind of advanced, you have to practice a lot. I tend to shy away from these moves because of just online in general. I find them a little bit too risky, but hey, if you're playing offline in tournaments or something like that against your friends, these two options are definitely worth going for. Now, keep in mind, aside from these universal options, characters might have other anti-airing options as well. For example, okay, I kind of need a little bit more, more time with that. For example, characters like Johnny Cage, if I can time it correctly, yeah, some characters like Johnny Cage, I think Scorpion, have these like kick moves that can be used as an anti-air. Johnny Cage, I think, has several. And this, this one might be a little bit too slow on startup, so I would recommend using this instead. A lot of characters have these like spin kick type moves and they can be used as an anti-air. Again, it just comes down to looking at your character's options and seeing what they can do. All right, there's one more option we have to cover. 
and this one is probably the most character specific one. It really only applies to characters that have very fast walk speeds. Luckily, we happen to be playing a character that has a very fast walk speed. Let me just set this up. Do a jump kick. Characters like Johnny Cage can very, very easily walk out of the anti... Not anti, the jump kick hitbox of characters if they see a jump coming and punish with a full combo. Yeah, I mean, I don't play Johnny Cage, but as you can see, you can get something like this. Now, once again, this is very, very character specific. Some characters I know for sure that can do this are Johnny Cage, Scarlet can do it. Uh, I think Liu Kang for sure has a uh, good enough walk back speed. Cassie Cage. Again, any character that's kind of fast and nimble is going to be able to do this. But even slower characters, if you anticipate a jump coming, you can do this walk backwards and full punish. This is probably the most threatening anti-air option because you are literally eating a full combo if you're the opponent. So listen... This is, again, an option that is for sure going to discourage people, hopefully, from jumping. Now, adding on to this, this is just kind of, I don't know, it's pretentious sounding, but like fighting game psychology. Listen, there are going to be opponents who do not give a single flying fuck. They are literally going to be flying 90% of the time, jumping like crazy. So those types of opponents, you really got to either be super patient and just block jump kicks and whatever they do after, or be really consistent with your anti-airing. Listen, some people are not going to learn. A good opponent will jump a couple of times. They will jump when it's safe to do so. If they eat a down two or if they eat a special move or a full combo, they're going to adapt. However, it all comes down to conditioning your opponent. Conditioning in fighting games is extremely important. It's basically the idea of kind of limiting your opponent's options. So a smart opponent is not going to keep jumping if they've been anti-aired. Now, basically, you've conditioned your opponent to not jump because of your good anti-airs. Based on that, you've already limited this whole upper portion of the screen against them. So that is a very powerful technique. And that is why anti-airing and consistent anti-airing is extremely, extremely important. Again, I'm not going to say and sit here and say that it's easy because it is not. I have trouble anti-airing a ton of times. You know, people can be unexpected. Again, the connection, different options and all that. Yeah, it's not easy to, to do consistently, but it's very, very much worth practicing. Hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial on anti-airing. As always, if you enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, subscribe and all that. And of course, I am very, very open to options on or suggestions on what other tutorials you would like to see with this game. I have a couple of ideas, but if you've got anything, do let me know. Thanks for watching, guys, and peace out.